Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cooks, I'm Keith and it's Christmas! So I'm going to do something that's quite a lot of fun to make, uh, not you know, massively great to eat, but uh, it's a good centrepiece and uh, will amaze all your friends if you tell them you're making yourself a gingerbread house. Okay, a couple of shout outs, one for Jaden Eagleton and another for Sam Myatt who requested a shout out on a recipe for something easy. So I'll mess that up because I wouldn't say this is easy at all. <laughs> and the reason I wouldn't say that is because this is my second attempt. I had a go at making one yesterday. Here it is. More about that later on in the video. <laughs> So that was a complete disaster because the gingerbread was really dry and hard to roll out. And uh, then it all fell to bits when I tried to assemble it. So we try not to give up and be disheartened. So I'm having another go. So basically there's three separate components. There's your gingerbread, there's your royal icing to glue it together with. And I'm going to also have a go at making some sugar glass for the windows. And they'll also be maybe sticking on sweeties and things. Uh, but I haven't quite decided yet. Anyway, first thing to do, make up your gingerbread and bake it. So ingredients for the gingerbread dough, I've got 750 grams of plain all-purpose flour, 350 grams of unsalted butter, 300 grams of dark muscovado sugar, 150 grams of golden syrup, so that'll be about a third of that can. If you can't get golden syrup, I think you can use corn syrup, but I've never tried that. And two teaspoons of baking powder and two or three tablespoons of ground ginger. Now I need to melt together the butter, the sugar and the golden syrup. So I've started melting the butter just to add sugar, turn the heat up a little bit. This is a fairly magical thing that I got recently. It's, uh, it's an induction hob and it was rather cheap from Ikea. Uh, makes a little noise because it's got a cooling fan underneath it, but if you've ever used an induction hob, they're quite magical. They're very, very quick and responsive. Um, almost, well, every bit as responsive as uh, using gas, in fact. And while that's cooking away, we'll add the baking powder and the ground ginger to the flour. And also what we'll do is get the bigger bowl. Right, the, uh, the goop is um, nice and pretty much homogenised. <laughs> so just pop half of that in with the flour and stir it in and add the rest. And stir that till you get a nice smooth-ish dough. Okay, <laughs> that's as smoothish as I can get it in the bowl. So I'm going to tip it out onto the worktop and knead it a little bit until it really is smooth. Fun, fun, fun. Knead, knead, knead. I'm so needy. Right, so now what you need to do is wrap that in plastic film, stick it in the fridge to cool down. Okay, here's our dough, nice and chilled, and so we can start building a spectacular gingerbread house. Right, here's my architectural design drawing for the gingerbread house. I said it was amazing, it's actually very, very basic, I think. <laughs> so, four walls, two roof slabs, four chimney sides, a chimney slab, and something that might turn out to be a tube of licorice, but I don't know. So uh, I've worked out my dimensions and if you weren't confident with 3D geometry you could make templates but I think this is straightforward enough to just do it without templates. I could be wrong but you know, we'll see. <laughs> so you want a bit of flour on your worktop and your rolling pin. You also need a ruler and a knife, and maybe a skewer. 
So, oh, oh dear. This is looking a bit dry and crumbly, which is what happened yesterday. <laughs> Turned into a disaster. Right, <laughs> plan B. What I did yesterday was uh, I just put a, a smidgenette of water in a plastic bag with the dough in it just to add a teeny bit of moisture. I don't know why recipes don't tell you to do that because this obviously isn't going to work. This is much better. So let's get rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Another trick I learned yesterday was roll it on greaseproof paper and then you won't have the problem of trying to get it off your worktop when it's stuck to it. I'm actually having fun. <laughs> no, you can't tell. So this is going to be the front elevation. Uh, so um, from my design drawing that needs to be 24 centimetres wide and 16 tall. So let's just check that. Yep, yeah, that's plenty for 24 and for 16. So just make a nice cut with your ruler. Um, uh, good idea to use something that you know is square. Oh, flipping heck. <laughs> That's not 16. This is. So I'll just um, patch a bit on. Give it that proper rustic look. Don't tell anybody I did this, will you? Right, so this, um, I need a window and a door in it. The door has an arched top because I like to make things difficult. <laughs> so I'll just cut that. With a conveniently sized cutter. And if I can get this off in one piece, that'll be my door. Yay, magic. <laughs> And the window, well, okay, I'll pretend I'm going for a, a wonky look. <laughs> and I want the shallow arch top for that. And because uh, I am a designer, <laughs> I'm making it look a bit proper, so I'm doing actual stone blocks. And I'm also going to do a, a keystone at the top of the arch and we'll have a nice um, little jelly fruit, jelly sweet in there. Now I'm going to do the end gable end and I'll just mark that with a bowl. That's going to be the, I'm going to do brickwork uh, radi radiating out from the centre of the window. And that's my circular window, my Oriole window. So I'll just cut the uh, stones out and make the quarter stones extend a little bit. Right, so you want to get your oven preheating to 180 degrees Celsius if it's a fan oven or 200 if it isn't. And what we're going to do is bake these for about 10 minutes. All ovens are different, terms and conditions apply. Right, we've had our 10 minutes, so I'll get it out of the oven. Woo woo! That's a chimney pot, by the way. So just give it a little prod, and if it feels firm, then it's done. All right, so those need to cool down a little bit. Um, when, when they have cooled down a bit, it's a good idea to trim the edges that are 
kind of structural that are going to be stuck together just to get them really really straight. Right so I started this at 10 o'clock this morning um, hoping that I'd get it done in a couple of hours and then I could retire to the shed to work on my secret woodwork project. However it's now gone 5 p.m. and <laughs> I haven't finished. Um, I knew it's, it's going to take a few days to get it all together but uh, I thought this first stage would be much quicker than it was. So what I'm going to do now is glue together the four walls and I'll leave them overnight to set really firmly. So your glue, your mortar for your building is royal icing. So I've got 300 grams of sifted caster sugar, powdered sugar, and you need two egg whites. Get the egg whites in there and the old uh, electric mixer or stand mixer if you've got one. So on slow, just uh, Just get them a bit frothy and then add half the sugar. So that's kind of all mixed in and smooth and silky. And then we'll just trickle in the rest of it bit by bit. And I'll just keep on beating that for a couple more minutes till it gets really thick. I reckon that will do the job. I don't actually know, but it looks good to me. Nice and smooth and silky, pretty stiff. Right, so let's start assembling the hoose. This is the back side only. And what I'm going to do is trowel on <laughs> some oil icing on the edge. And on the side, beautiful church like side. And this is the challenging thing about making a gingerbread dance, is holding it or getting it all to hold together while you're um, doing other things. See? See what happens? Um, I don't know what I'm doing now. So, but I'm a broken wall. The uh, adventure continues. I've done a bit of work, or quite a lot, since uh, you were last here. I've repaired this wall, which actually broke into several pieces. So I've stuck some spare gingerbread on it with ice and sugar in strategic places. I've also iced the whole thing on the back, and that gives it, well, that seems fairly firm. And I've stuck on the window sills because, you know, when, when you try to do it, when it's assembled and vertical, it's, they're just going to slide off and make you upset. <laughs> also, I've, I've sprinkled it with caster sugar, which collects in the mortar lines and makes it look a bit more authentic rather than piping it on, which is what kids think you do. <laughs> okay. Um, so now what I'm going to do is make some sugar glass to stick in the windows. And I've never made this before either, so this should be fun. I've got equal quantities of sugar, that's ordinary granulated white sugar, and water, that's ordinary cold tap water. Um, I will have a little bit of cream of tartar, that's five gram sachet, and 
a smidgenette of green food chlorine because I want a slightly greenish tinge to it. So I just pop the sugar in the pan and the water and I want those to melt. This needs to reach a temperature of 150 degrees Celsius which is known in the sugar trade as the hard crack stage. And there is a way to test if you reach that, which is to just spoon some of it into a glass of cold water and it should instantly form into uh, brittle threads, basically. I'm going to throw in the cream of tartar. Apparently this does something to the structure of the sugar that makes it work better. 104, 105. Okay, got some way to go. Uh, and basically what, what, what we're doing here is we're boiling off nearly all, almost all the water. So we get 99% concentration of sugar, which I'm guessing is just, is not gonna leave us with a huge amount of um, sugar glass. But anyway, can always make some more. Right, <laughs> that happened more quickly than I expected. So we actually got up to 157 when I wasn't looking. So I'm going to try just doing this directly into that window. And it's a lot greener than I expected. And I'm just going to pour out the rest of it onto this um, baking sheet. And it should just set into a, a flat sheet that I can hopefully cut up without trashing it. Right, um, this is set, and it only took about five minutes, so now I'm going to see if I can get the greaseproof paper off. Oh yeah, look at that! <laughs> Something actually worked. <laughs> now, um, a bit later on I'm going to pipe some mullions and frames and things on that. That'll be fun. Right, so let's... Try to just pipe a line around the edge. There we go. That'll do for me. Now I'm just going to put some blobs on the quadrant pieces because uh, I've got some jelly sweeties to stick on there. Well, I didn't expect it to be easy, but I really didn't think it would be this hard. We're now on to day five of the construction of the gingerbread house. So essentially I've made two gingerbread houses, but um, most of the first one is in bits. And this is what I've salvaged from the original. And this is what I remade last night, including a lovely front door with a cat flap and red glass because, you know, well, I, know. <laughs> I didn't like the green, but now this is gonna look like a brothel. <laughs> Not to worry. So we've got all our bits and now we can start our final decoration before we assemble it. Um, just a quick note on the chimney pots. These are cream horn moulds or formers that appeared in my Christmas stocking a few years ago and I've never used. Uh, but they're just about right to form a chimney pot round, so that's cool. Uh, I've also got, yeah, these are all the chimney pieces. And that's me and that's Mrs. Keith Cook. So let's get decorating. Uh, I'm going to need to make up some more royal icing because the first batch is finished. Right, I'm going to do a bit of messing about with the roof. I'm going to chamfer the top edge of each piece so that they'll join together neatly. Oh, hopefully. Uh, and also I'm going to stick a block of um, gingerbread on the back of each one and that will, when we stick it onto the top of the wall, that will lodge onto the top of the wall, hopefully, and stop it sliding down. Easy peasy. I am a standard. Now I'm going to give the front wall a sprinkle of sugar. I actually rolled these, um, <clears throat> I actually rolled these new pieces quite a lot thicker than the original ones, so they are somewhat sturdier. Right, now I'm going to start putting the chimney together. So I've got my two sides, well actually that's the front and the back and these are the two sides. 
and I've just snapped the point off. Be careful with these. <laughs> Bloody hell. It were all going so well. Anyway, butter the uh, edges with glue, or royal icing as we call it in the trade. And then the hard bit is stick them, press them together. Actually, you know what? I think it'd be better to build it upside down on the chimney top slab. I'll just wait for that set. <laughs> this isn't going great. That's um, spread out to almost fill it. And this one, the icing did actually spread out and fill the entire window. So uh, I thought I'd scrape it off. <laughs> and that's what happened. Yeah. So that's going to have to come out. Fortunately, I did make a sheet of uh, red sugar glass. So I'll stick that in and uh, all will be well, maybe. Okie dokie, I've got all my pieces for the gingerbread house. And I've got some things to hold it up with while I try and assemble it. So I've got a pile of cookbooks and the toaster, because that's a nice square edged toaster. So wish me luck. Right, somewhere in here is three quarters of a gingerbread house and I hope it's able to support itself. It's a bit stuffed if it doesn't. So I stuck the front on uh, a while ago and uh, it's all looking great except the red glass has dribbled down the door and down this side wall which um, doesn't look great unless you were doing like Dracula's castle or something. So uh, I think um, oh, I'm fed up with this. <laughs> I really am. I don't know if I want to finish it or not. I suppose I'll have to finish it because I've started it. And yeah. Anyway, on we go. And here it is, the disastrous gingerbread house. But didn't we have a lot of fun learning? about all the things that can go wrong with making a gingerbread house. So that's that. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't already done so, share it with all your friends on social media. Join the conversation, make comments, nice, friendly comments. Uh, abuse and trolling will be dealt with severely. Uh, so thanks for watching and see you next time. Merry Christmas.